And how do you feel about the people are talking about now with uh, thinking or worrying, perhaps, uh, with conscription, conscription is a word I can't say today, possibly being an option if there was a further war. Do you think we have or the youth of today could handle such a... Uh, oh, yeah, they can, they can handle it. It's just that um, the important thing is that it's that year before you get into into any kind of a battle zone that differ, makes us different from nearly all the other armies in the world. We have much better preparation training mm. than most armies do. Um, you know, um, the other thing is that we train everybody as an infantry soldier to start with. Mm. Partial training anyway. Mm. Partial training, everybody goes through Kapuka to start with. And that means that the the regime of doing uh, doing things correctly, um, doing things in drills, doing things um, in, a, in a, a clearly articulated way, all the rest of it is, is drummed into you long before you go anywhere near a battlefield. Do you think it's helpful for a young person? A lot of people talk about national service should be, uh, you know, they, they should be forced upon young people. Look, I don't. Um, the military is so different these days. I mean, we talked to, earlier on about contact front. You remember mm. what I said? Yes. Well, now contact front isn't a drill. It's put the drone up and get the techos to blow. I mean, <laughs> you know, it's, it's yeah. a, whole, a whole different, a whole different world. Yeah. So you need, you need highly skilled and and um, highly intelligent um, uh, people. You can't just take any man off the street mm. as you used to be able to and train them in twelve weeks or whatever it mm. is. You, you now, they're all, they're all highly skilled. They talk about having uh, both 50-50 male-female representation in the army, or at least in infantrymen. Do you think that's a positive thing? Do you think that's, uh, or, or I, is it? I, I don't have a problem with it, so long as it's based on capability and not on gender balance or something. On I, I have no problem at all with that. Yeah. I, I, I was in, in the uh, officer training unit here at Waco. And one of those young women, she was quite short and quite tubby kind of look about her. She was the most warlike person I've ever met. She threw herself behind trees and yelled and screamed and charged with a bayonet and all. I mean, I'd love to have her on my side yeah. in a battle, <laughs> you know. So I'm not, I'm not fussed about what gender you are. I'm fussed about how good you are at it. Of course. And I, I think that's, for most people, that is their their take on that subject. Yeah. The, the media seems to beat that up as, you know, we will take absolutely anyone. But I think, you know, no. when it comes down to brass tacks, the vast majority of females that would be involved in any Defence Force personnel would be the best, the best of the best, the best available. If you certainly got, hope so. Well, I mean, we already know. I mean, did, how often have you flown to Sydney in a, um, you know, in a... Um, a Qantas jet uh, f- flown by f- a four-ring female pilot. Exactly. I mean, you put your hands in their hands, or you put your head head in their hands every Absolutely. day. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So look, there's no issue there. The problem I've got is when you say, "Oh, we've got to we've got to have a 30-man platoon now. We'll have to have fifth, have to 30. Plat- Where are we going to get some uh, some females to fill that number? That's wrong. Mm. That's wrong because that just brings the whole quality of the of the of the capability of the whole unit down. What you want is, where can we find people who are up to this standard to fill the ranks? Mm. Now, if some of those are female, half of them are female, three quarters of them are female, great. Mm. You know? And they, they find that with gender quite a bit, where yeah. a lot of females in, in, in Scandinavian countries where they say, okay, we need 50-50 and this job, this job, and this job, they often find that women don't want to work in those jobs. And if you don't want to be there, you're not going to do the best job possible. But in saying that, as you said, that lady who you had an experience with, yeah. they are more than capable. And if uh, one female is more than capable, that means uh, that any course can be. Of course they are. The only other issue, I suppose, is, is physical strength. Mm. Um, we're getting smarter at how we equip our troops and the weapons and, and carry and all the rest of it are getting lighter. So it makes it easier for more likely um, muscled uh, men and women to cope with it. Whereas in my day, you, you might have a, you know, a, 20, a 20 kilo pack plus a 15 kilo weapon and, and ammunition to carry. And that would be difficult for many women, mm. not all women, but many women. Mm. And they shouldn't be discriminated on that basis. But if they're not capable of carrying that, then of they course. shouldn't be in that role. Of course. But it's changed a lot now. 
are now the much lighter gear, and so you can reduce those um, those uh, physical characteristics issues. Mm. Yeah.